This is the world that we are living in now. How can we change it? Is this the world that we want to leave behind? Can hydrogen be the solution? Hydrogen can be produced by oil companies, distributed, sold by oil companies. So it will not make a financial crisis when we all go to zero emission cars. If you have a constant flow of renewable energy, you can fill up your battery in your car. The efficiency is better because almost all the electricity you put in the battery comes out for the engine. But if you have an intermittent source of renewable energy, like solar, like wind, sometimes you don't have enough, sometimes you have too much. Germany very often has too much sun and wind together. And uh, they have to pay the consumers to, to use this electricity, otherwise the grid is exploding. At this moment, you can produce hydrogen from your excessive amount of wind or solar energy. You produce hydrogen, and this hydrogen is produced for free. You can use it in a fuel cell for your house, and you can put it in your cars, in your trucks, in your boats, in your airplanes, everywhere. So we've spoken to many experts who've explained to us that hydrogen has the potential to lower our carbon footprint. But we've also learned it may not be so easy. Now, hydrogen may be the most common element in the universe, but in order to use it in your car or in a truck, you have, of course, to produce it. Hydrogen is the H2 in the H2O, which is water. And our planet definitely has enough water. Yeah. But separating that H2 from the H2O is not that simple. No, I spoke to Professor Kwasnik. He is a leading expert in the field of hydrogen. And he also raises some concerns on how efficient hydrogen actually is. When I burn hydrogen, only water is produced. That is nice. But there is no hydrogen. I have to produce it first. I can produce hydrogen from natural gas. But then the climate balance is worse than if I burn natural gas directly. I can produce green hydrogen by electrolysis using solar and wind power. It has many losses, but it is climate neutral. It's also very complex and expensive. As the first element on the periodic table, you can find hydrogen in a lot of different places. And what you use to make hydrogen is actually extremely important. Brown hydrogen is made through a process called coal gasification, which uses younger brown coal that contains more hydrogen. Gray hydrogen comes from natural gas. Using natural gas to make hydrogen produces harmful emissions like carbon. So if you don't capture it, it pollutes the air. Then we have blue hydrogen, which is also made from natural gas, but they catch and store the carbon. Storing the CO2 is expensive and creates new problems, like what to do with the CO2. If hydrogen today is mostly produced by non-renewable energies, then how can we make it green? Green hydrogen made out of renewable energies is the source for endless power for our lives. But to do that, you need something called an electrolyzer. Our electrolyzers today are about the size of a microwave and they have two inputs, electricity and water, and their output is clean, pre-compressed hydrogen. It can be plugged into any energy setup, whether you want to use hydrogen for refueling, whether it is to uh, have it for your um, energy storage for a neighborhood or to create heat as well for district heating, for example, in the Netherlands. We have a variety of use cases um, that are using our electrolyzers. Electrolyzers are not new technology. They exist for over 50 years. And yes, it's that simple. The only thing you need is a renewable energy on one side, then you add water, and then you get hydrogen. But how does an electrolyzer actually work? Green hydrogen can be made through a process called hydrogen electrolysis. You can create reactions in various solutions. This is the electrolytic process and can be used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. There's a machine that does this, 
and it's called the hydrogen electrolyzer. We use hydrogen electrolysis to convert electrical energy and store it into tanks in the form of hydrogen, which can then be transformed later back into electricity. New technologies have made it possible for electrolyzers to get smaller, more efficient, and more cost-friendly. And that's why we're able to produce hydrogen for so many different kinds of purposes now. Yeah, we already explained that you can use hydrogen for boats and planes and trains. You can even power whole cities with it. But the question is, how do you extract the energy from the hydrogen? For that, you need a fuel cell like the one in the Hyundai Nexo. Water is a molecule that consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. It takes energy to separate water into oxygen and hydrogen, and energy is released when they are put back together as water. A fuel cell puts hydrogen and oxygen back together in a way that it releases the energy in form of electricity. This basic chemical reaction happens in every fuel cell, no matter where you use it. So now that I'm starting to understand exactly how hydrogen creates energy and how that energy is used by my car, I'm starting to get a sense of exactly how important hydrogen could be to power our entire society. You know, Germany and EU already announced that they will go for hydrogen society. And they have made a specific targets, they made specific organizations, and I think 2020 is the starting year of Hydrogen Society and I'm very excited. I don't know how much of our society will be fueled by hydrogen, but it will play a very important role. You will see applications in heating, industry and mobility for hydrogen and it will coexist with full battery electric cars. Hydrogen will be a very, very important part of the energy solution in Germany. So does hydrogen fit into our society? Can it replace all the fossil fuels we use today? If we want to use green energies, we have to find a way to store green energy. Yeah, because where we've been getting our stored energy in the past is stuff like oil or coal. But if we're going to switch to renewables, how exactly are we going to store wind? Find out more on how we store wind and how green hydrogen can be the foundation of a new green society.